Okay, four ball shot, one ball on the left hand side, two ball on the right hand side, three ball in the left hand corner, four ball in the right hand corner. This is called the butterfly shot. We're going to make the one ball in the left hand corner, two ball in the right hand corner, three ball on the left hand side, four ball on the right hand side, five ball in the lower left hand corner, six ball in the lower right hand corner. Yes. On this shot, I'm going to shoot the eight ball in the corner pocket. Both balls are frozen on the rail. Draw the cue ball back to this rail and have it come down here so I can shoot the nine ball in this corner next. And then the nine ball should be able to go from here. The idea here is to make seven ball in this corner pocket, have the cue ball hit all six rails, winding up here with the eight ball in that corner pocket next. Okay, four balls in one shot. The one goes in this pocket first, followed in by the three, two goes in the left hand corner, and the four goes in the side pocket. Going to make the one and three in this corner pocket, two ball in this corner, four in the side, five will also go into that corner, and the six in the side. One and two ball in the side pocket, three ball in the left hand corner, four ball in the right hand corner. Okay, we're going to play three balls in one shot. The one in the corner, the two ball cross side, cue ball going around the table, making the three ball. One ball, time shot in the side pocket. That's it. Here's a shot that very rarely comes up in a game, but if it ever does, just hit the one ball full and make the 15 ball, 15 ball combination in the corner pocket. This is called the silo shot. The silo opens up and the 15 ball is a rocket and the rocket goes into the side pocket. One, two, and three. One ball in the left-hand corner pocket, two ball in the right-hand corner pocket. Before the cue ball goes in front of the two ball, coming around, make the three ball. Double kiss bank, eight ball in the corner pocket. Cutting the nine ball in the right hand corner pocket. All right, three ball in the side pocket, two ball in the right hand corner, one ball comes across table into the left hand corner. Here's a shot that looks like you might scratch on. Cutting the eight thin, banking the eight in here without scratching. Okay, making three balls in one shot again. The one ball in that corner pocket, two ball follows it in, three ball comes across table into this pocket. Here's a shot taught to me by Jersey Reds. Thin the three ball very thin, have the cue ball hit the rail, and as the three comes out, cut it back into this pocket. Here's a very thin cut, banking the nine ball back in this 
corner pocket here. This is shot where we're going to make the one ball in the right hand side pocket, two ball in the right hand corner, cue ball hits the top rail, goes around table, and makes the three ball in the same corner pocket. Mm -hmm. We're going to cross over bank on the one ball, bank the one up here, have the cue ball go over off the rail, make the two, and then slide across table and make the three ball. Yes. This is a one-handed jacked up shot, meaning I'm not going to touch the rail. I'm going to hit the two ball, have the cue ball go over and make the one. Meanwhile, the two ball continues four rails around the table and goes into the same pocket. Yeah. Here's a position shot with reverse English. Cutting the one ball in the side pocket, hitting the cue ball with left hand English, having it hit this rail, here, spin up, and come around in here for the 2-9 combination. This is a rail first draw shot, hitting the rail just before the eight ball, drawing the ball with low right hand English, coming over to this rail, spinning back up for the nine in the corner pocket. You've heard the expression, out of the frying pan into the fire. Well, now we're going to shoot a shot called around the frying pan into the side. Playing the nine in the side pocket. Okay, on this shot, we're going to make four balls in one shot. The one ball in this side, two ball in this side, three ball in this corner. Cue ball will double the rail here and make the four ball. Okay, this is what I call a complete wraparound, where we're going to hit the one and have all these balls move, and the nine comes in off the cue ball into the side pocket. Once again, all four balls in one pocket. One and two in the left-hand corner, three and four in the right-hand corner. This is just called a football shot. The idea here is hit into the one ball and have the cue ball run interference, take the two out of the way, which takes three out of the way, goes across, hits the four, knocks the five out of the way, hits the six, and takes seven out of the way. Eight ball in this side pocket. Okay, this is called an escape shot. I'm tied up by all the balls, what I'm going to do is hit into this cushion, have it hit into this cushion, hook back down and make the nine ball in the corner pocket. Okay, a football shot here where we hit the one, the one takes two out, hits into the three, knocks four out, hits into the five, knocks six out, hits into the seven, knocks the eight out, nine in the side pocket. Okay, hitting the one ball, having the nine come down and make the four ball, cue ball goes three rails around the table, comes down and makes the nine ball in the pocket. Okay, table clearance shot here, where we're going to cut the one into the two seven, take everything out of the way, cue ball hits the rail, comes back, hits the nine off the five, nine goes in the corner pocket.
Okay, this is a rail hook shot. We're going to draw the cue ball and have it hook around the three, four, and hit the five into the nine. Here's a shot called the Great Escape, shooting the cue ball into the cushion and having it hook around and dive down for the one ball. Ditto. When you think there's no way out of a shot, try shooting against the point. You might be surprised by the action of the cue ball. Let's see what happens here. Oh my god. Four balls in one shot. One and two in the right hand corner, three ball on the side, cue ball goes up to make the nine ball. One ball in the right hand side, two and three ball in the right hand corner, nine ball in the left hand corner. Reverse English hitting the cue ball on the right hand side, going three rails around the table to make the nine ball. Shooting the cue ball into the one ball with the low right hand spin, having the one ball kick it back to this rail and back towards the nine ball. This is called a resistance draw shot, hitting the cue ball very low, going through the balls, the cue ball should hook back and come back and hit the one nine combination. This is what I refer to as a force draw shot, pocketing the one ball in the corner, having the cue ball come to this rail, then hook back and come back and make the nine ball. Okay, on this particular shot, I'm going to shoot the cue ball into this corner pocket, the one ball into this corner pocket, two ball into this corner pocket, and the three ball will stay exactly where it's at. Hitting the one ball with a high right mass A, having the cue ball spin around the triangle here, going down and make the 8-9 combination. This is called the machine gun shot, hitting the one ball, having the cue ball carry them off two, go behind these balls and make the nine ball. Simple little mass A shot, going around the nine, making the eight ball. Okay, hitting the cue ball high to the one ball, having the one ball kick the cue ball back to the two, and then have the cue ball come back again, make three in the corner pocket. This is a mass A shot going around two balls, going length of the table and making a one nine combination. This is a shot that I played in Pittsburgh against Billy Incardone in 1969, and he had played me a good safety, so I had to come up with the shot, and what I did is mass A the ball real hard, have it go over and make the five in the side pocket. And I was living in Canoga Park at the time, so they call this the Canoga Park Curve. This is called long table mass A. The idea is to make the seven and eight and have the cue ball go screaming back to make the nine. One ball left hand corner pocket, cue ball hits this rail, goes around the eight and makes two ball.
take shot. A lot of people pass this shot up because they don't know about it. The idea here is to hit the eight very thin. As it pushes the nine out, the cue ball goes across, catches the nine into the corner pocket. Hi, my name is Machine Gun Lou Butera. I'm a former world pool champion, a member of the Billiard Congress of America Hall of Fame, and I'm going to demonstrate how I got my nickname Machine Gun Lou by running a rack of balls in less than a minute and 30 seconds. This is a carom shot where I am playing the 14 ball off the 3 ball into the corner pocket. All I have to do is determine the contact point off the 3 where I have to hit the 14 into. Using the same angle on all 3 balls here, the 1, 2, and 3, I will show you the effect of a high, center, and low ball hit on all 3 balls. This is a high ball. Now using the center ball, it should come off a little further angle. Now setting up same angle again, this time hitting it with a low ball, it should come further up table. When the balls are frozen as the 10 and 14 are and aimed in a straight line like this, what you can do is by hitting the 10 ball on the right hand side that will throw the object ball to the left, which is what we want to do. So let's see what happens. An aiming technique that I use is taking the tip of the cue through the center of the pocket, drawing an imaginary line back through the center of the object ball, picking a contact point on the object ball, turning the tip of the cue back through the center of the cue ball, back behind the cue ball and hit that point. One of the most important shots in pool is a center ball hit and being able to hit it when you have to. And a good exercise for this is to shoot this cue ball over the spot and have it come back off the rail into the tip of the cue stick. When shooting the draw shot, you want to keep the cue stick as low and level, and remember to follow through. In order to make the cue ball follow the same path as the object ball, hit the cue ball a little above center. Aiming a combination is almost like aiming a single ball. Determine the point in the pocket where you want to pocket the ball. Come back through the first object ball, determine your contact point, come back through the second object ball, determine your contact point there, 
Once you've determined that contact point, come back through your cue ball and hit the first object ball on the contact point and your nine should go straight in. In playing kiss shots, you have to determine where the perpendicular line is. The five ball is aimed to this side rail. Coming over here to the center of the pocket, you would find your perpendicular line is between the two balls. Therefore, by hitting the three ball on the right-hand side, it should kiss off the five and go into the left-hand corner pocket. Billiards, or pool, is generally considered to have originated as an outdoor lawn game in Europe around the late 14th or early 15th century. Lawn games played with balls and sticks were generally enjoyed by the nobility who had the advantage of having huge lawns on which to play such games. The upper class could also move their favorite games inside when winter came. But once inside, bending over to pick up the balls was so tedious that the games were moved up onto tables. The first mention of the indoor game was in 1470, where a list of the household possessions of France's King Louis XIV speaks of billiard balls and a billiard table. While bankrupting France during the building of Versailles, the king enjoyed snookering his friends as well. The word billiard is derived from the French bille or ball. The sticks called maces were used to shove the balls around rather like shuffleboard. The game was played with two balls on a six-pocket table and a hoop not unlike a croquet wicket. Men were allowed to use the straight cue, while women being considered too flighty to be trusted with such a formidable weapon were made to use the mace. Even Mary, Queen of Scots, was said to have passed her long hours awaiting her execution playing billiards in her prison cell. History doesn't tell us if she coined the phrase, being behind the eight ball. <laughs> Shakespeare, in 1600, mentions billiards in Antony and Cleopatra. Cleopatra suggests billiards to her servant Charmaine, but as smart employees have done ever since, Charmaine tells Cleo that her arm is too sore to play, thus not risking beating the boss. By the 1700s, the table was dressed with green cloth to remind players of the grassy plains and the great outdoors. Unfortunately, a long period of smoky, crowdy pool halls came and went, thus this verdant allusion to nature has since escaped us. Pool was also considered by some to be a genteel way to pass the time. In fact, the ladies of the day in the early 1800s were invited to attend the finer public billiard rooms in an attempt to better display their charms. Men soon learned that women too could master the game. By the mid-18th century, the extra hoops and sticks had disappeared. In 1823, a French political prisoner, Captain Mingot, invented the leather cue tip this innovation allowed the player to make the cue ball spin and have greater accuracy over the game. Being a perfectionist, Mingo asked for more prison time to further develop his invention and his game. At roughly the same time, Jack Carr, an employee of a billiard room in Bath, England, made a startling discovery. Rubbing the leather tip with chalk seemed to impart magical powers to his cue and to his game. Onlooker said he put an English on the ball. Thus is the origin of the billiard term, not to be confused with a popular breakfast item, the English muffin. Billiards then came to America. George Washington was said to be a fan of the game. He probably crossed the Delaware on occasions to attend a billiard game or two. Our sixth president, John Quincy Adams, was also a pool enthusiast. In fact, his request for a billiard table for the White House created loud criticism from others on Capitol Hill, bemoaning the incredible extravagance of such a lowly pastime. Billiard Gate, circa 1825. The great French general, Napoleon Bonaparte, was also a pool fan. He played a game or two during his exile in St. Helena, where he probably tried to hustle his guards the way he hustled most of Europe. Small innovations appeared throughout the 1800s, such as the two-piece queue in 1829 and the slate table bed in 1835. The modern billiard table was developed shortly after Goodyear first vulcanized rubber in 1839, and the invention of the celluloid billiard ball came in 1868, revolutionizing the billiards industry. The only drawback to the new balls 
was that they had a tendency to explode on impact. And even the game of pool has its ambassador. Enter Irish emigre Michael Fellon. In 1859, he won a prize match with a purse of $15,000, an astronomical amount for the time. Now, with this money, he established a table manufacturing company that exists to this day, the Brunswick Corporation. By the turn of the century, billiards competitions were international affairs, drawing established celebrities from around the globe. Mark Twain used to frequent these competitions and was an avid pool player himself, not to mention a fairly decent writer. The ballyhoo and flapper extravagance of the 1920s infected pool as well as the rest of the world. Publicity stunts were commonplace. The champion Ralph Greenleaf thought it would be a hoot to shoot a game of eight ball from the air. I hope he doesn't scratch. Hollywood movie stars were also pool aficionados, both on and off the screen. W.C. Fields hustled pool in his vaudeville days, and the Three Stooges were found sticking around a pool table occasionally as well. Well, sweeten me. By the time of the Great Depression, polite society began to lose interest. Pool was considered a lower-class pastime. Then, in the 1960s, Paul experienced a revival with the movie The Hustler. Paul Newman played fast Eddie Felsen, a cocky young player, and Jackie Gleason was Minnesota Fats, the master. The 1986 sequel, The Color of Money with Tom Cruise and Paul Newman, gave the game another boost in popularity. Today, pool is considered a professional sport, as well as a good way to pass the time with friends. Some of the best-known figures of the sport come to us through their championship and commercial exposure. Rudolf Wanderon, better known as Minnesota Fads, had a popular TV show called Celebrity Billiards, in which other greats showed up and showed off. Willie Moscone, a Hall of Fame member, began to dominate the game in 1941, and for 15 years thereafter, defended his crown. Machine Gun Lou Butera is best known for his rapid-fire style of play. In 1973, he ran 150 balls in just under 21 minutes. That same year, he won his first world championship. Women have a place in the Hall of Fame as well. Jean Belukas started competing when she was seven years old. Former Swedish model Iwa Mataya won the US Open title in 1988, and Laureen John Jones began as an 11 year old and has stayed on top ever since. The world of billiards is open to all. See if you can't become one of the greats. 